You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 45, VPS is Dead, with Dr. Samir Puri. On this week's show, The Dental Guys interview Dr. Samir Puri of SerecDoctors.com and Spear Education. Dr. Puri has trained more Serec doctors than probably anyone on the planet and knows everything there is to know about in-office milling with Serec. Can he convince The Dental Guys that Serec is better than a dental lab? Or is there more to Sarek than just ROI? Find out this week on The Dental Guys. episode of the dental guys i'm john the dental guy and i'm wes the dental guy and uh this is a pretty little different this is a slightly different studio setup than what <laughs> wes and i have just a little just different slightly different i mean they've spent a few more dollars here so where are we well, actually we, this is the new dental guy studio yeah right? actually <laughs> it turns out yeah we we, we and we this is a really the new good dental guy is actually going to be joining us Absolutely. from here on that's out, right, right that's right so so you guys are probably wondering if you're turning this on and seeing the video like where are you guys and what is this all about well we've been talking about this if you've been listening the last few weeks that we're continuing our journey of continuing education out at Spear Education, and we're we've been oh, out man. here now for a day in the sleep medicine. My course. finger hurts, John. Yeah, the we stupid had, pulse ox. Yeah, we hit our middle pulse finger ox. last night. <laughs> yeah, I woke up at like 11:30. I thought my finger was gonna fall off. I'm serious. And I'm suing. But <laughs> that's right. Please don't do that. No, 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 no. Just kidding. I didn't no. know. But fine. so so we had uh, we had been talking back and forth to to see who could be a good fit to you know be on the show to really talk through a little bit about what Spears doing and right. but maybe from a little different angle that we haven't looked at so far as we've interviewed some of the other faculty here at Spear. And um, Samir, Dr. Samir Puri uh, stepped up and said, hey, I'd, I'd be interested in doing that. And um, so welcome. We're Thank glad. you. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. So, so Dr. Puri, tell us a little bit about how you, who, who, first of all, who you are, what you do, and uh, kind of how you got involved with Spear Education over the last few years. Uh, thanks. Uh, so it's uh, great to be with you guys, and Thank thanks you. for the opportunity. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the two of you and looking at my life over the last 15 years, and I see some resemblance, some, okay. <laughs> something outside of the box in terms of uh, dentistry. So that's really exciting and uh, happy for you guys and all your success. Um, I was in uh, private practice for a number of years, was practicing out in L.A., moved to uh, – I kind of grew up in L.A. Um, I moved there after my residency at the University of Tennessee, started a very small practice, and uh, acquired a second practice and kind of moved there, and I was – very happy and doing what I was doing and uh, ended up meeting a good friend of mine uh, that you guys know that we'll share a little story about a little later, uh, Dr. Tarun Agarwal, T-Bone. A lot of people know him. He's a great guy. I've known him for, gosh, 15, 16 years now. And he and I started a, a small meeting in Las Vegas called the Townie Meeting. Um, that started was just a the townie meeting. Just wait a minute. Just, just, a small yeah, meeting. A small. It, it was very small at the no, beginning, right? It, it was, uh, you know, we'd get anywhere from about 750, 800,000 okay. people okay. in Las Vegas. Okay. Um, we weren't expecting that. We met on Dental Town, T Bone and I, um, and uh, said, hey, let's do a meeting. Crazy, stupid. I'd never run a meeting, I had no idea what was going on. And we actually went to the Flamingo Hotel, had to get help from one of our. Um, vendor partners to get space because they're like, mm. we're not giving you space. Who are <laughs> right, you guys? Right. You know, he was, I think, 26, 27. I was uh, 29, 30, something like that. And so we, we did the meeting and uh, uh, planned for like two, 300 people. And we had like six, 700 people show Success. up. Success. That's awesome. Wow. So it was great. So we, did, we ran that together for about 10 years. And then from that, I got to know a lot of the different manufacturers. And in my residency, I had seen the CEREC system. Mm -hmm. uh, I did my residency at the University of Tennessee and uh, saw the first CEREC II back in the day. Mm -hmm. And growing up around computers, my family's in the computer business. And okay. so that, I was just like, wow, this is great. But never really thought that I could uh, afford it. But when I got into practice, I looked at the numbers. And through Townie Meeting, I got to meet some of the engineers at Serona because they were one of our sponsors. And they're like, hey, you know, what about the CEREC? You should get one. I was like, yeah, I love it. I just don't know if it makes sense for me. And as I did my research, it was like, man, this is great. This works perfectly. So I ended up getting the CEREC a few years later. Is this CEREC 2? 
No, this was Cirrhic 3. So I got okay. my Cirrhic delivered, I want to say late 2003. Okay. Right. okay. Um, this was the year that they had gone over to the 3D. Okay. Mm. And um, so I got that. Three, I ended up becoming a basic trainer for uh, Patterson Dental in L.A. Okay. Um, and then started doing some advanced training out there with another uh, a previous partner of mine. And then from that, um, there was a, a, a Academy of Computerized Dentistry meeting here in Scottsdale. And at that time, Serona was also running uh, CIREC 20, their CIREC 20th anniversary. And because I had T-Bone and I both knew the Serona folks, um, they hired Townie Meeting, a.k.a. T-Bone and Sam, to run CIREC 20. Okay. So we were organizing. We did the hotel contracts, all the speakers, everything. We did everything for that meeting, and in fact – we ended up doing uh, the next three or four meetings before they took it in house. They said it's getting too big, and we're going to do it ourselves. Fantastic! It's all yours. But through that meeting, one of the speakers that they wanted was Imtiaz Manji, mm -hmm. who was uh, CEO of Mercer at the time, um, and was Mercer was opening up at that time what was called the Scottsdale Center for Dentistry. Yes. I reached out to Imtiaz, and uh, I was here in uh, Scottsdale for that computerized industry meeting, Imtiaz was here, we had dinner together and just totally hit it off. And if you ask Imtiaz, he'll tell you I, the true words, at the end of the dinner, I said, this dinner is going to change my life. Mm. Well, it did because he hired me to be the CIREC educator right. at Scottsdale Center for Dentistry. Mm. Later on, Frank and Imtiaz joined companies and Scottsdale Center became Spear Education. Mm -hmm. So we had Spear Education and CIREcDoctors.com and then over time we merged the two together. Wow. So wow. relationships, relationships. And that and so I've been I was the first instructor here at Spear before it was Spear. Wow. Um, and awesome. uh, moved here full time in 2011. So, OK. And, and here we are. And now training the doctors that come to Spear and yes. still maintaining the website. Yes. And online training. Yes. So you're doing a lot of video. Yes. And then you're doing hands-on as well. So we do video. Uh, we run our website. We do hands-on courses. We put on a magazine. Um, I'm involved with different uh, programs, educational programs, uh, to kind of help expose doctors to the CEREC technology. So I'm, it's, for me, I, I love the CEREC. It's all about sure. you know, what I've done for the last uh, yeah. number of years. Well, we, of course, have gotten to know, as you mentioned, T-Bone earlier, yes. right? And so it's you know, when you talk about CEREC and, and our, in our world, you know, he's been an influence yes. uh, that has, you know, talked a lot to us about that technology. And so I mentioned the other day, I said, hey, you, you never believe who we're having on, hey, you know, and I didn't I knew you guys knew each other, but I didn't know <laughs> quite. The, and he said, you know, it turns out he, you were actually out with him yeah, at that time, we were together. which was hilarious. And so he says, I said, well, you know, that's going to be great. And he said, well, make sure you ask him about this time when we drove to Las Vegas together. <laughs> so, I mean, I... I what happens in Vegas doesn't stay yeah. in No, Vegas. it doesn't stay. Well, we weren't technically in Vegas when this happened. Okay, so, so tell us what happened. Um, I T-bone, you're crazy, but all right, it's his story. Um, <laughs> if so, he listens if to he this. Li <laughs> <laughs> he will. He will. So we started Townie Meeting, as I mentioned, and the first couple of years, it was all hands on deck, his wife, my wife, T-Bone and I, we did everything. And T-Bone's sister was also helping us out because she had some uh, meeting planning business. But we had, uh, he flew out to LA, which, where I was living at the time, and we piled up all of the supplies, all the, the handouts and the registration packets and all the, in my SUV at the time. And the four of us, T-Bone and Mona, my wife Mina and I, were gonna drive to Vegas and run this meeting that we had never run a meeting before. And all of a sudden we're on the hook for hundreds of thousands of dollars with this hotel in Vegas if things don't go well. Wow. So we're driving out. It's about a four, four and a half hour drive from LA to Vegas. And uh, about halfway through, he's like, hey, we got to stop. I said, what's going on? He's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm a little nervous about the meeting. And <laughs> is there anywhere we can stop? I was like, uh, yeah, there's a McDonald's coming up. Uh, let me pull up. And, and I pull up in the parking lot and i like, you got to go somewhere? He's like, and he's just kind of sitting there. Oh, man. We had a code brown. Let's just put it that way. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> no way. oh man. So he's just like, just, oh, just no. stiff. Like, I'm like, are you okay? He's like, no. 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 <laughs> no. And, and his wife's like, 
T Bone. Oh my God. You know, because <laughs> yeah. we just, we had met a few years ago, sure. but, but me, uh, Mona's like, what the heck are you doing here? So that was a story. And, and, you know, he's shared that story before, but oh I, I thought goodness. he'd want to bury it. No, yeah, he, did. Literally, he wants it to come out. He's I guess. proud. He's proud I, of it. T Bone's a big guy. Yeah. But I have never seen him be that stealthy, <laughs> dodging people and kind of walking. That just shows you how, how important this meeting was, man, to <laughs> yeah. make it happen, man. Yeah, that it would drive oh you to goodness. that. Yeah. Well, you know, that that's that's a great story. And and I think that, you know, that like it all came back comes back, like you say, to the the relationships yes. that you've built. And and you know, obviously it's spear the the Sarek training, you know, and I, we're very interested in how Sarek and Spear kind of integrate because we definitely see for sure that it makes sense with Sarek doctors mm-hmm. and we see where the Sarek training is. But kind of tell us how you feel that Spear looks at Sarek as far as being integrated into their world. Because, well, you know, Spear is all about you know, full arch reconstruction, yes. I mean, dentistry, ha- comprehensive dentistry. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that, that's interesting mm-hmm. to me is that, you know, most people that come here are interested in comprehensive care. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, look, I mean, full mouth reconstruction is great, and that's what we talk about a lot at Spear, treating the worn dentition, how to do TMD and do it right, and sleep apnea devices. And I know now that the technology is available for us to do that digitally. Yes. But there's been a lot of, I mean, Sarek has done probably the best at trying to get that into the market because they've been in it the longest. Um, and it just now seems to start to make sense for some spear doctors to start to look at some of these technologies from 3D scanning. But it didn't to me and John, it's kind of confusing a little Mm, bit about how it works together. How it works together. Yeah. I think let me clarify one statement when you guys say spear education is all about uh, comprehensive care. Yes. I agree. But comprehensive care doesn't necessarily mean full mouth rehab. True. That's true. Right. True. It, it could well, be that you've got uh, uh, some broken down teeth. You're going to address everything comprehensively, but the treatment might be two teeth. Sure. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, in a situation like that, uh, Sarek is perfect. Yes. So let's start with the history. We started as as Spear Education and Sarek Doctors, two distinct companies. Over time, that they merged together. Okay. So Sarek Doctors is now a part of Spear Education. Okay. And over that time, uh, what's been amazing to me is when we first started you would you would people would raise hands in the spear education workshops or seminars they how many people on Sarek? you know 10 15 20 percent now it's like 50 60 percent mm. and it's not that we're doing this massive <laughs> marketing push or anything like that it's just people see how the technology works so mm-hmm. for example um you talked about sleep appliances you guys are going through a sleep class well you know with my Sarek, if i have a, a compatible cone beam a serona cone beam um, uh, I can take a scan, I can take a, a, a digital scan, um, and then I can go ahead and send that information off to the, the laboratory and they can make an appliance for me digitally. No more impressions. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So where we are today with the technology of CAD CAM, and, and CEREC has been the leader, but there's certainly there's other systems out there. Um, we've just chosen to stay with CEREC just because that's what we teach, that's what we know. And well, I'll tell you what I do appreciate about Spear Education is that when you come out here, you in no way get a sales pitch. Yeah, no, we, that's For not For anything. Yeah. It's not the goal. I think that that's the right way to do it is to yeah. teach the education and let the questions come. Yeah. And then it let, naturally, and it's kind of how you become a CEREC user yeah. is that yeah. you learned is that right? I mean, yeah. And then you saw, okay, this has a benefit in my practice, yeah, like and I'm, I can make that work. I mentioned I grew up around computers. I used mm-hmm. to put together break apart and put together computers. So Sarek to me was was natural. And when you mentioned, you know, you don't get a sales pitch at, at Spirit, we, we, we are actually very adamant about not doing a sales pitch, but certainly we want you to go on to the next step. Right. It's no different than a dentist, uh, you know, you have a hygiene patient. What do you want that patient to do? You want them to schedule for their next visit. Right. Why? One, you obviously, it affects your business if you don't have a good hygiene recall. So you you have to take care of your business. And so we want to take care of our business. But two, it's more than just taking care of your business. It's you know that if that patient doesn't take care of their teeth, regular recalls, it's going to affect them in the long term. Mm-hmm. Right. What We're so passionate about what we teach. We know that if people aren't getting the most that they can, it's going to affect them. It's going to affect their business. The sure. more you earn, the more you learn, the more you earn. So, Sarek, essentially, I guess what you're saying is, it's just it's a tool. It's just a and, tool, and it just is a tool that integrates well with a lot of the things that Spear Education is teaching. Absolutely. And it's just you know, if this this is one way 
that if you want to own this technology, that you can do some of the things yes. that we're talking about. Maybe not use it for every case, but you're using it for a lot. You can use it for a lot of the things that you're learning right here at well, Spirit. So routine care, you know, a couple of crowns here and there, a quadrant, no problem with Seric, right? It's, it's absolutely is, no is problem. Is Seric for full arch rehabilitation? Uh, it can be if you do it properly. It's just a different way of doing that's a, it. That's a pretty, if you do it properly, to me, yeah. is the... Is the is yeah, that the, is a big question. That's the big question. And, and that's the key. I mean, you can't just grind 28 teeth and scan it with Cerec and design it. I guess you could. It's just like taking, you know, two prepped arches and just two models and sending them right. to the lab. Hey, make me a full mouth rehab. Cerec can do that. Um, we actually have a workshop. Uh, you guys are with uh, Dr. Kevin Quishan right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kevin is, I think, on the Spear side has been the front runner and the leader of, of integrating mm -hmm. the two technologies. And we've done numerous full mouth rehabs uh, together. But it, it, it doesn't change. I think one of you, oh, I forgot who said it, but you said CEREC is just a tool. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Instead of physical impressions, we take a digital scan. Okay. Instead of doing a wax up with a laboratory, uh, on on stone models, we can print models. Yes, and and mm -hmm. so it's it's just a tool that you integrate in your practice, and whether you're using it for a single tooth or a full mouth rehab, absolutely you can well, use it anywhere. Let's roll into that part of the show. Let's talk about some of that technical aspects as we kind of it's kind of a natural segue. Is what are some of the exciting things that Seric can do well? Just geek out a little bit on its capabilities. I love right now the implant aspect, the mm -hmm. storing implants. Um, so. Typical uh, implant appointment is, a, let's say you're working with a surgeon. I don't know if you guys are placing your own implant. We are. Place, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, or you're placing your implant. You, what, what do you typically do? You place the implant, you place the cover screw, patient comes back, right? And so Bob Winter and um, Greg Kinzer do the implant workshop uh, here at Spear. I do a, about an hour guest lecture with Darren, Darren Deister. And we talk about, you guys are learning the foundation of implant restorations. Uh, let me just show you how you do it digitally with Sarek. So... What do I love about it? As a CEREC user, what can I do? I place the implant, or my surgeon places the implant. Patient comes in. I take a scan of that implant that day. Mm -hmm. so index it, the placement. Index the placement at the time of placement. Right. From my CEREC, I can now fabricate a custom healing abutment, mm -hmm. which is based on the emergence profile of my final restoration. Yep. That's right. Yep. That's modern. Right. Yeah. We like you. Yeah. That's yeah. what yeah. we talk about. about okay. We're First, we talk it. about, you know, in our office, we're doing scanning just not milling. Right. And so for us, it's usually so you guys are doing generating the same thing. that. Well, yeah, yeah. But we're, we're generating it usually from a CT, you know, looking yes. at the, the root form of the tooth on the CT, generating so a, custom, a custom healing well, abutment from that. But it's not as, it's definitely not as But specific. there's advantages to, to that technique. But here's <laughs> the advantage that I have with a CEREC. Once I scan that implant, I'm making my custom healer by for lack of a better word, designing the full contour crown and chopping off the top. That's, yes. right. that's, okay. that's what we're talking about. Yeah. But when the patient comes back, let's say it's a molar, it's a mm. screw retained restoration. I already have the design done. That's right. So this is just really cool because Wes and I just were talking about this. Um, I saw a great lecture by a guy named Peter Barnt, who's uh, he's a he's a military guy, but he was talking about the same technique, and it really blew my mind because yeah. it cuts down tremendously on time. Well, just the other day. You can just do a secondary scan yeah. uh, when it's after it's healed of the of the teeth if you need to, or you can even possibly generate that crown. If, if everything heals properly around your healing abutment, if it's a you don't screw even need. retained restoration yeah. where the tissue, it, it doesn't matter. It's beautiful. You're done. Yes. You don't need anything done. else. Your, your seat visit is I mean, is I told minutes. my assistant the other day, I said every posterior implant we place, whether I bury it or put a second stage healing abutment on immediately, I said, yeah. we're scanning them first. Yeah, we scan. should scan it first. Because yeah. worst case scenario, all you yeah. do is take your healing abutment off, take a second scan if you didn't have so a this custom is exciting healing former. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah because, yeah. because you know, to me, that's such a simple concept. Mm -hmm. And yet, when we do, a, we have a two-day workshop on, on CEREC and implants. Yeah. How do you restore? And at the beginning of each class, I ask, how many of you are taking the scan at the time of surgery? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Right. right. It's yeah. new. It's new. Guys, it's next it's level, new, But man. it's Guys. not necessarily that complex. No. Right. It's just that it hasn't been something that's been out there. Nobody's. And, well, because there hasn't been an advantage because digitally, it, well, there's he, not an Well, I think we understand healing better in the posterior if you're doing proper placement and, mm -hmm. bone, yes. placement. and volume maintenance. Let's just say that, okay? That if we volume maintenance the case, we're only going to use lose maybe half a millimeter. Yeah, you lose less bone doing yeah, it that way, too, bit, when you place a custom that. healing right. abutment right. and, 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 and contain Tons graph. of advantages. In the anterior, that. it's a different story. But well, so anterior, anterior, you've got to add a few appointments where sure. you're actually scanning the soft tissue. We agree. Yes. Yes. Right. So right. you can't just go from, no. unless it's a screw retained, now, let Maybe. me ask you about that because, and we weren't necessarily like planning on talking about this in the show, but this is great. 
So uh, that's Wes and I have gone back and forth on this. If you're coming back to scan that soft tissue, uh -huh. you got to be quick about it because yes. that tissue changes. Do yes. you feel like we can be good enough to be in the able anterior. to in the anterior to capture? Because we're used to making like custom impression copings, yes. right? Like the yes. old school custom impression coping, Bench top transfer made. that on the model. But do you think with the scan that we can be good enough, like on a lateral, to so capture two, that tissue? So two ways to answer that. Yeah. One is if it's going to be, uh, if I've done my custom healer properly, I've based on base that healer on ideal contours. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I've under contoured it a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what I really need is not necessarily the pressure on the soft tissue. That's right. Mm -hmm. I need to know where the gingival margin is. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? So for that, <laughs> you yeah, you can be very hard. I don't yeah. even need to take out right. the healer. I just need to right. scan it. You just need it. to see where yeah. it where it interfaces at the gingival right. margin. But if I want to create that exact emergence, then, yeah, you've got to – I mean, camera in hand, yeah, right. pull it out, You've scan. Be ready to roll, yeah. But but here's the thing: usually for me, if I'm doing anterior, it's a very you know aesthetic case. I'm not going from custom healer to final. Right. Okay. I'm going from custom healer to screw retain provision. provisional. Exactly. So you and so, you, it. so you you've got it. a little bit of. We appreciate if you're leeway. listening to this right now. You're listening to a man. You know, <laughs> Sam, yeah. that does it right. Yeah, because that's, know, because that's I mean, we, that is at the level that we should yes, be doing. Yes, we really right appreciate now. that yeah. because I, people don't understand yeah. how important that is. Yeah, and the, is, and the savings in time, like, I mean, that for an anterior, that's just cool. Yeah. And you can do it, I think, excellently with uh, a custom impression coping. Yes. But you can also do it very well with this. In the posterior, though, the from a business standpoint, from a time saving standpoint, is tremendous. It's your you, your you, appointments you, it's a one the, visit deal. It's your appointments in the post for scary, single tooth. <laughs> it is scary, and and you guys know T Bone, and he's a big preacher of this. Yeah, uh, you know, talking about fix your fee. Now you, you can't do it for every case, but yeah. for a routine right. posterior implant. Oh yeah, right. You, no so for Sarek, what are my costs? Well, I've got the machine costs, so that's obviously there. But the actual parts, you're about a, a hundred and fifty bucks, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit less for for abutment, the for abutment the, and crown. Yeah, right. Yeah, not counting your implant. Not what, counting the implant. whatever implant. Yeah, whatever company. implant system you're right. using. Right. Um, but uh, right now, so in the CEREC world, that workflow that I'm talking about, there's a little bit of a disadvantage just because of material. So right mm -hmm. now I've got to use a, an extra block mm -hmm. to make my custom here. I've got to use a tie base. So that adds a bit of cost. Right. However, knowing what I know and the people that I know, and we've been... It takes been, some training. It takes. Well, it's not just the training; it's the material cost. So, what if we had a block that was, you know, twenty bucks that mm -hmm. I could use that for the custom healer? Yeah. Right. So Do that's. Do you think now on these custom healers? I've heard some people talk about milling PMMA direct to the connection. Yes. Do you, mm -hmm. do you like that versus yeah. tie base? Versus a tie base. No, I mean, so with the Cerex system, you have to have a tie base. Okay. Okay. You can't do a full contour. So you're looting PMMA. that PMMA exactly. to that tie okay. base, exactly. and then screw retaining that. Right. So right now, that's one of the shortcuts. Because one thing that, we that we're doing is we're doing one piece custom yes. tissue formers, but we're having the lab make that. Right. right. And they're that's making that out of titanium or PMMA. It, but so again, the so the advantage you guys have is it's 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 a little bit less expensive. What are the, what are you guys paying? For it's sixty like bucks. That? Sixty bucks. Okay, so expensive. it's less expensive yeah. than yeah. right now what you're doing. Right. But the disadvantage that you have is that that contour is not directly no. correlated. No, to no it's not. And Whereas the way on how I'm doing action goes exactly. And you're, right. You may have differences. So, We've seen so, yeah. there's, so there's no perfect technique. There's yeah. no perfect solution. Are, but the CEREC workflow works pretty well. Yeah, we yeah. geeked out on implants a little bit. But what is a few other things that you're excited about in the digital world? Uh, I love doing uh, anteriors with Sarek. Uh, the the ability to have control. We just had a patient, um, my teaching partner here, Mike Scram, said he was in town for a workshop, and um, so I said, "Hey, well, let's. We've got this patient. Why don't we do it together?" Because we'll, as an educator, a lot of the the cases we're doing, we're trying to document so that we can share that information. Sure. So if I've got someone with me who knows how to document, it just makes the process easier. So Mike and I did this case together. It was a young lady who fell down, broke four anterior teeth. Um, and I think I, I could probably mail you guys the photos if you want to, you know, plug it into the podcast so people can re refer to it. But she broke her forte; she fell down. Okay, someone did bonding on her; it looked terrible. So we we restored it with Sarek, and it was gorgeous, mm. absolutely gorgeous. And so the materials that we have today that we can use in the anterior, again, not for if I've got you know Betty Boop from Beverly Hills, probably not going to be my first choice, but. Most routine cases. Yeah, we're talking milled Emax here is what you're talking about, yeah, right? And then doing some stain and glazing. Milled Emax, but you also have Fels Traffic, right. and mm -hmm. Vita, and uh, Empress. Okay. The, yeah. These blocks are actually layered, so you don't need to do any cutbacks. You can build in that incisal right. transistor. So it's monolithic. Monolithic right. for strength. For strength. 
Right. And so now, but like you said, the limitation for if it's somebody from Beverly Hills or some that you know the client we're talking about, yeah, yeah, where we need to actually go in there and lay in some depth. Of color, right. or if you're you, looking you at can, the contralateral tooth, and right? You're so you got a couple okay. of options. If you got a good lab tech, you mail them out and say, "Hey, cut these back." Yeah, exactly right. But but I don't I don't want to give the impression that just because it's monolithic, just because it's ceric, it's not going to look so. Good. How? Uh, uh, sorry, one of one of our faculty members, um, I won't name him. I don't know if he wants his name out. We did six ceric veneers on him. Emax mm. MT. Mm. Looks beautiful. He's a dentist. He works at Spear. Yeah. It's so it's well, you can, we, we saw people like a couple of years ago, we were at a digital dentistry conference down in Florida and we saw Galib Burrell talking about yeah. mm-hmm. doing the same technique using Sarek. And the only thing that he talked about as a limitation was sometimes that, and I, I this, the Sarek proposals weren't always as pretty right. as, as it, if he would do like a mock up. And that's then, why I'm in business to do Sarek training. Yeah, yeah, to make them <laughs> but, better, but right? The, absolutely yeah. right. So there's there's different techniques around that. Yeah, that but you, you can, can like you say, you can make a 100%. set of veneers that can rival those from the lab. Hundred percent. If you if you're willing to learn how to do it well. Yeah. And and take the time because there is some time, and you have to love that. I would, you have to love. That's mm-hmm. the thing we talk a lot about, Wes and I, about what is maybe differentiating somebody who really wants to do say anterior dentistry with Sarek. It seems like you have to have a love for the the staining glazings and and for the the lab side of things, maybe more than some. Yes and do. no. The okay. case that I just talked about for you is anterior was polished. It was polished felspathic porcelain. Interesting. I, I, I posted photos um, um, on Facebook and Sarek Doctors. You can't tell the teeth. Hmm. So yes and no. Yeah. So sometimes but, maybe. But, but listen, that's that's isn't that with anything? If you're going to do something well, you have to love it. Absolutely. That's right. If you're Passion. not going, Absolutely if you're true. not going to take the time to do it right, of course you're not going to get good. Okay. Totally so. True. You know, we've talked about some exciting things that, you know, digital dentistry can do for us, and in particular with Sarek. But what are some things right now that it can't do? Um, uh, we are uh, at a point where I think um, if anything I can do with taking an impression, I can do it with Sarek. Only because PBS is dead. I'll say it right now. I'm sure other people have said it. It is dead. I got the Sounds blue like cam. a show title to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got the Cerec Blue Cam with a powder uh, in 2009, and the folks uh, in the marketing department, Serona and other companies, 3M had just come out with their system. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. PBS is dead. PBS is out of the app. You know. Right. No. Today, 100% it's done. You don't need it. So what are the limitations? The limitations are it's not so much what it can't do because of what it can't do, chair side, I just sent it to it in my laboratory, Right. So you're not eliminating your lab. You're just taking your in- information a little bit differently. The limitations that we have today is what are you going to do chair side in a reasonable amount of time Yes. versus, you know what, it's just quicker to scan and send to my lab. Yes. So high-end aesthetics. Can I do it chair side? Yeah. Someone may say, you know what, it's just for me it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to scan it and send it to my lab. I look at it and say, listen, if I'm doing an eight-unit case and I'm charging twelve, fifteen hundred bucks a unit, and it takes me the morning to do it with no other patients, with no lab fee. Is that worth your time? I think that's not such a bad production right, morning. You right, know? and right. no temporaries. No and, temporaries, no yeah. nothing. So right. that's really, it sounds like you're saying the same thing that Wes and I feel about our scanners is that we can do anything with a scanner we would do with impression material. Um, there's still some workflow stuff, I think, being worked out with maybe removable from the scanning standpoint. I think that there's some people doing it well and some people saying they're still a little struggling right. with it. But what about the milling side of things with Sarek? Because we all agree, I think, that the scanning side, um, we can do everything we need with Omnicam yes. or with you know Trios or a lot of these Whatever the systems, systems that are absolutely. out there. What about with Sarek milling? Are there some things, some limitations with the milling compared to, say, you know, an industrial mill yeah. at a lab that you feel like, okay, this is a case where you know, I need to send to a lab because the milling capabilities are not as good? Or do you feel like for the typical case, that's not an issue? So, so for... The, the short answer is for the typical case, it's not an issue. But let's let's talk about milling. Um, you can mill anything you want to, and but the, the challenge that's there is can you do it quickly, right? So Serona could tomorrow make an industrial size milling unit that has, you know, two micron capabilities as, as that, but it'll take you four hours to mill a crown. It's not reasonable. So at what, so where do you push the <laughs> speed where as you increase speed, you're going to sacrifice quality. Yes. Okay? That's right. Yes. So right now we're at about 10 minutes or so for a typical crown. And what's the marginal fit? You're in uh, the 40 to 60 microns. So we range. know that an explorer can detect 50 microns, so that's acceptable. It's yeah. it's 
comparable to what you get from a laptop. Right. Okay. Now that that's gets, that's in office. Mail. That's in office today. Yeah. Now let's take it to the in lab part of that. It's not that much different. So mm. it's a little bit better, but again. What is the typical marginal integrity of a PFM from a lab? I agree. It's yeah. about 120 microns. Right. Yeah. But so, most people yeah, gold, are... You can get it down to 30 or 40, but that's for PFM. But modern for, labs are milling at milling. this 50 micron. Well, anybody you know. doing zirconia, mm-hmm. yes. 100% of the zirconia is milled. Right. Yes. And the advantage that you have with zirconia with CEREC is you're milling it actually bigger and it centers and it yes. shrinks down. So your marginal integrity and in detail we understand that. Yeah. is yeah. even better. Yeah. Sharp angles don't so, matter as much. Yeah. And so to, they could, so Serona, any of the other milling companies, to, they can make a chair side mill that gets you better micron adaptation. But it's slow. It, then it doesn't become reasonable. Yeah. Right. So, so where's the balance? You right. want to be as well, good as clinically a relevant yeah. versus like, well, that fits amazing, but it's not clinically relevant. Yeah. It's not going to make a difference in case not success. On an SEM, it looks a little better, but it's not. I, I would argue that if you prep, so a lot of it has to do with your preparation. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. What this is where I think this you is where I, think, I, I figured you'd go there because yes. we, it, we, this comes into two, and I, know, I think I know what you're going to mention is prepping, but I think that's where, like, say, pressing can have an advantage for a prep that's not as good. Yes. Maybe. Depends on the prep. Yes. Right. If the preparation is ideal, smooth, smooth, smooth. Whether you press it or you mill it, you're going to have the same fit. But when you get irregularities in the prep, um, then Let's just be honest with you. Most people out there are having trouble with their preps. It keeps us in business. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's Dr. What, Bob Winter's RD class, so that's what right. he does. And, yes. and, he'll and I, I will say that if you haven't taken that course or you haven't taken a prep design course, yeah. Yeah. Um, you need to take that course yeah, because it'll change. It. It'll make everything fit better. Yeah. The milling strategies that they'll be able to, to apply to that, the algorithms that go behind a five axis and three axis milling, it just gets better. Yes. Because whenever you look at a jagged edge of prep in a piece of software, it has to figure that out. Right. And if it has to figure it out, it's not as good because, well, it's it takes longer and the lab's looking at it yeah. from a speed perspective and they apply that same and and ca- Emacs is a bad combination for a jagged prep would you agree right. with that yeah mill Emacs. yeah D-Max. because what happens with Emacs if it gets too thin it's like many ceramics it, if it gets too thin it tends to chip so you have right. to reinforce the margin you, and such are you pretty much saying that pressing Emacs let's geek out a little bit about that material because it's it's a one of our favorites it's fantastic material yeah mm-hmm. so pressed Emacs you know one thing that we heard um in in our lecture here is and and I and I can see where they're coming from is when we're prepping 12 units Mm -hmm. okay your mind gets a little bit blurred Mm -hmm. looking at all those margins Mm -hmm. and maybe you're not as good and i know i'm not as good Mm -hmm. when i'm doing my single on the 12th prep yeah Yeah. on the 12th prep and you're finally refining everything it's just not as good Mm -hmm. and so milling um are we pressing are you pressing anything no okay so you're just making sure yeah yeah well i mean one of the things i have in my camera is that i can go into a mode that's called the 2d mode Mm-hmm. It doesn't scan, but it turns that into a very high magnification intro. It's a good camera. call. Yeah. A good so call. I just review my preps, knowing that I'm have to think like the milling unit. Um, I just have to make sure that my burr and I have to know the size of the burr that's in the milling unit can reach my margins. There you go. So it's just it just takes a while to. So I guess our lab guy would have one other question for you from this standpoint: is he he wants to produce a repeatable product mm-hmm. and calibration with these machines and maintaining calibration is crucial. Mm -hmm. Understanding how the burr wears as you mill multiple units. Mm -hmm. And whenever dentists don't follow protocol and replace the burr when Mm -hmm. it says to replace the burr to save a buck, that's when we run into problems. But if you follow protocol and you can have from start to finish, whether this is your first crown on your CEREC machine or milling machine, or whatever machine it is, to the 200th crown, Mm -hmm. you feel like that you're giving them, with in-lab and in-office, a repeatable product. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something, um, you know, having just spent the last three or four days with a bunch of Serona engineers, that they have programmed the machine to to take that into account. There's things called force sensors, and and I'm talking CEREC, I'm sure other systems are the same. Yes. Force sensors Mm -hmm. that actually detect how much force does one swipe of the burr take mm-hmm. to remove a certain amount of ceramic? Mm-hmm. So that's a calculation. And when you start reducing the efficiency of the burr, it'll say change the burr. Yeah. 
So the machine's going to kind of tell you that. It won't mm-hmm. let you mill with super dull burrs. But having said that, if you uh, go <clears throat> from, uh, you know, first mill to the 20th, yeah, there's going to be a slight difference. Yeah. Is it detectable, clinically significant? Probably not. Yeah. But that also depends on your material. Yeah. When, but, you're, when you're milling zirconia, it's it's a chalk-like material. Right. You can mill 100 times. You it's can not get gonna, away It's not going to do anything. Lot. Well, and I think that that's maybe where, in the end, what I think I'm hearing is, with Emacs specifically, mm-hmm. that you've got to be good if yes. you're going to use CEREC and you're going to get excellent marginal fit and adaptation internally, uh, you have to be an excellent prepper of teeth. Yeah. And if you're if you're not, the lab can, in some ways, can make up for that by pressing. We hope. <laughs> right. If the la- Assuming the lab is doing their yeah, job. Yeah, we hope. Okay. But I right. mean, I, I don't want to put that pressure on my technician. I want to give them... Whether I'm milling or having the technician do the work for me, I want to give them something that they can work with. That's sure. not going to challenge them. That's not going to compromise the case. Right. But yes, but in general, I think you're acting. You're but correct. are some of the struggles that you see as a trainer when people talk about, okay, I'm, I'm having some issues with fit, do you find it's usually prep design? Yes. Okay. Is it always yeah. prep design? Um, Pretty much. Never say always, but yeah. it's but it's close. 99.9%. <laughs> Preparation design has a lot to do with it. Okay. Yeah. And that makes sure. sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. And that's why, as you said, with zirconia, we don't it's more see, forgiving. Yeah, we don't it's see more the, the mill doesn't have to work as hard, and mm-hmm. you can deal with sharp edges more easily because, as you said, it's a 20% larger material. Right. The mill is just not having to deal and with it. And you're those. milling with smaller burrs, so there's a lot of, lot yeah. of advantages. Mm-hmm. I see. I see. So when new doctors are getting trained by you, when are they told to stop and send it to the lab? For a routine posterior crown, um, I don't know why we would have to today. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, in the past, we would say, you know, I need a stronger material to second molar or whatever. Well, you guys are obviously familiar with Emacs. I would argue that Emacs done properly on a second molar is better than a full coverage zirconia crown. And I'm picking on zirconia because that's the latest trend these days. Because for zirconia and, and, and gold PFMs, I need a retentive preparation. So I got to take off my millimeter, millimeter and a half off the top. I need three millimeters of axial reduction for retention. Well, now I'm bringing the tooth down. With bonded restoration, a.k.a. Emacs or something else, I can just remove a millimeter off the top. I can bond to that enamel by incorporating a bit of retention resistance form. So it's a kinder preparation. Where else would you have to send to lab? Right now, today, your limitation is span. The blocks that we can mill with CEREC, most people, is 40 millimeters. Mm. Anything bigger than that in terms of a bridge, I've got to send it to the laboratory because they can mill pucks and such. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the argument will be, well, what about deep subgingival margins? Well, don't you need isolation for deep subgingival right. margins for PBS yeah. or cementation? So if I can't isolate that margin, well, maybe crown lengthening is in order, mm-hmm. packing cord, uh, putting on a temporary, having the patient come back once the tissue heals. So... That's no different. I would say 100% of the posterior teeth can be done chairside. Mm-hmm. In the anterior, it's just how much, how comfortable are you doing anterior? There's no reason 100% of your anteriors can't be done. Mm-hmm. But when you start getting into complex, large span bridges, uh, implant substructures and stuff, that's obviously a laboratory type. Yes. Uh, type deal. And in the anterior, as we said before, it's a lot about. How much time are you willing to put yeah, into it? Exactly. And how much do you love that part of yeah. dentistry versus saying, It takes more time, but I don't want to give the impression that, you know, you're sitting there for three days for four units. Right. I mean, I can do four units in a couple of hours. So it's not but yeah, it 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 is more meticulous. It does sure. take more time. You have to understand your materials. And you that's have, a big it, part of that, exactly. it seems like in the anterior. It's understanding the limitations of the material as far as masking uh, dark substrates yes. or you know, having to build in more translucency. What what should I start with, right. essentially? Exactly. And, and if you don't understand that, that's where the lab can help you because they laboratory they can has an advantage. They can selectively opaque. They can do a coping. They can layer on top. So lots of advantages there with the laboratory. Um, but you know, if you wanted to start learn cutbacks and do it, you certainly could. But now we're getting into the time and right. all of that. Right. Right. So cost effect. So now that CEREC is open source, what are you feeling? Does it, does that help you? I mean, is that something that was pushed? upon Serona to open up their, you know, their world per se, to be able to allow dentists to maybe branch out and do some of their own little projects per se. I mean, I think there's a lot of this 
open versus closed is marketing hype because theoretically, if I if I send it to my laboratory, mm -hmm. my lab is open. They could they can now do whatever you want. It's just not open chair side. So just so everyone's familiar, what they've done now with the new software is I can export my models. Yes. So if I wanted to print models, I have a three D printer. I can do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to take that model into another software, you can do that. Um, so. Um, yeah, I think I think it's still new, so we still have to kind of see where that leads us. But 3D printing is obviously what's going to be opened up uh, mm -hmm. by the new um, STL file export with Sarah. So what about zirconia milling with Sarah? Because mm -hmm. that's been something that's been obviously zirconia, as you alluded to earlier. It's it's been a hot product. It's yeah. been something everybody's talking about, and there is now the capability to mill zirconia on Sarek. And tell me about that. How is the milling of zirconia using Sarek, and how is it different than Emacs or other materials? So milling we could do forever. Mm -hmm. It was the sintering part. The sintering. There was no oven that was a chair side oven. And so the way, so w when we mill zirconia, we're actually milling with carbide burrs, not the diamond burrs. You mm -hmm. can do it with diamonds, but it's actually more accurate with carbides, and you. Mill it 25% bigger, and in the past, if you wanted to do it, you'd have to send it to a lab that had a sintering oven, and the sintering process was overnight, you know, mm -hmm. 10, 12 hours. Last year, Serona came out with their speed fire oven. That sinters zirconia in about 15 minutes. Well, but this is not new. I mean, I know that mm -hmm. Dakima makes speed fire ovens as well, mm -hmm. and, I mean, I think that, you know. But, but even those, I believe those were about an hour it just two. it just depends on what programs you're running okay. though. But yeah. but when you speed fire, there are some things that happen to the crystalline structure yes. of zirconium that could be a problem. So they, uh, Dr. Dennis Fassbinder, Rella Christensen, uh, Russell Giordano, three independent researchers did a bunch of tests. Strength is still the same. You're right around 900 megapascals. Um, there's no warping of the material or anything like that. The aesthetics with are, your zirconium. Correct. Well, it's yes, a very specific because we have to be very careful because yeah, when great points are different. Great point. Yeah. You're not just there's as yes, you know. Yes, I mean. That, so let's talk about. Yeah, that. let's be there's very careful. There's hundreds of zirconias yeah, out there. Yeah. When I what I'm referring is to is this dense ply serona yes, zirconia. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Designed for this process. Right. Because there's been a lot of studies that as you speed fire zirconia, you actually lose strength. Right. That's, That's right. why we're asking. That's about why we're that. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 I'm in the Sirac world, so. Right. There, it doesn't matter. You're absolutely correct. But they have validated that, as you so say. So that's good. Not a problem. And yeah. so I think, too, that, you know, whenever you bring that to the office, um, the ability to, to speed fire and teach intrinsic staining, you know, I infiltration, mean, infiltration yeah. techniques are the best that they've ever been. It's amazing what we can do yes. with zirconium. Yes. And maintain this 800 megapascal strength plus. And feel feel good about it. Now yeah. the 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 problem though, is what you said earlier, is that people are relying on bonding. Yes. And that's not that's not. It's a different preparation for zirconia. Right. Thank you. Right. Yeah. And that's been an issue that we've talked about a lot yeah. on the show. Yeah. Is that uh, you know all these all these discussions about why are my zirconia crowns coming off? Yeah. You have to treat it like a gold prep and a PFM prep. Yes. Yeah. There's no difference. I will say that the Cerex zirconia right now the so they, they brought it to market, and it's now a chair-side process, which is great for those people that want to do it. The shortcoming we have today is the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. It's a very opaque zirconia. Yes. So some of the zirconias out there yeah, are the new, beautiful. The 3M yes. uh, lava aesthetic. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. But the strength goes down. That's true. Yeah. So now you're... Else. Well, some yeah. of them are down to 550, yeah. 600, and, yeah. which means you're like, well, why am I not right. using why Emacs? Yeah, exactly. Right. I do, I do kind of, and you can't bond it. Right. So, and you can't, exactly. You can't bond so it. I feel, yeah, it's it's a question about the niche of that product. Be but, very careful. But with, mm -hmm. with so again, my world, the Cerec world, uh, in the fall, you'll see a Noritake mm. layered zirconia, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be very nice, that's much cool. more aesthetic. But again, you lo you're, you're losing some strength there. Yeah. And that's where a, bit, a lot of development is going on is translucent zirconia. It's amazing. A product, right. uh, while trying to maintain that strength. Well, let's okay. let's kind of switch gears. This has been great. Let's switch gears into ROI a little bit and business stuff with Sarek just a little bit about, you know, how because obviously um, the investment in Sarek is one of the things that, you know, a lot of people that are not in the Sarek world, they look at that and they go, well, is this a good investment for yeah. me? You know, and obviously we know that there's, 
that there is an investment in the in the technology, but a lot of us are investing in technology every day in our practice. So yes. it's becoming less, I think, of a sticker shock compared to when we're buying cone beams and we're buying scanners and we're buying. But but tell me a little bit about you know I guess I want to get into just like the the daily routine with that as far as ROI like uh, how long does it take Yeah so a, a case how long did it to very, mill a case you know that kind of thing A, a typical CIRAC appointment let's just talk about a first molar crown you're at about a, a little over call it for a standard person ninety minutes ninety minutes That's with Emacs that requires some crystallization time fifteen minutes or so in the oven or zirconia If I use a material that I can just polish. Celtra Duos, for example, um, I'm at l- less than that, right? You take off by 20 minutes. Right? So That's call it between. Yeah, what do you think that about Celtra? Celtra we, uh, we mentioned that a couple months ago on the show. What do you think about Celtra? I think Celtra? it's a very interesting material. Uh, it's new, mm-hmm. um, but uh, the cases I've done with it, it's not. Nice. And the advantage is, is that it's polishable. Right. Yeah, you can, it, you can polish it, and it's got a certain strength, about 200 MPA. You fire it, it goes to about 400. Mm-hmm. So if I'm go- working the premolar area, anterior, hey, why do I need all that strength? It's right, and it's bondable, bond- right? And it's bondable. Yeah. It's, yes. it's a lithium silicate, uh, very similar to Emacs. Emacs is lithium disilicate. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's bondable. Mm-hmm. You can polish it or you can fire it. So very great material. Yeah. It just hasn't been around as long right. as some of the others. So, But assuming Emacs, you're saying 90 minutes from start from appointment yes. time – from handpiece to finish, and and how long? And that's a very for me. That's a very generous ninety minutes. Okay, so how long is the patient hanging out for that during during that time? Is it, it while you're milling and yeah? You're so you figure you figure for again, we'll go to Emacs or Zirconia. You got about ten to twelve minutes of milling time. You got about fifteen minutes of oven time. Okay, add in few minutes to you know prep and polish and do all that stuff. So call it thirty minutes of quote unquote lab work. Gotcha. That's and then. Your preparation time is your preparation how, how time. How is this even financially possible? Because without having an auxiliary that is able, your highly trained auxiliaries in there, you would have to charge a lot. Well, what, for, do, people, be, what, do, what do most people schedule for a crown prep and a crown seat? An hour and a half. So it's no different. Yeah, but I'm not in the room an hour and a half. Right. You're not in the room here either. Yeah, absolutely. Get your, I'm doing get, some. It's got to be your, an auxiliary. You have get to get your, your auxiliary. Get your right. staff trained. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, so is Sarek so Doctors, let me ask you this, is one of the things that Sarek Doctors, are you telling them the same story? Yes. Like okay. they, they need we to go ahead, and, like go ahead and bring them out, yeah, like immediately. You know, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We, in, we encourage doctors to bring their staff and delegate as much of the process to the staff. So then, okay, I, w- I want to kind of move forward here a little bit, because, a little bit quicker, because John and I want to know, whenever you hire somebody and you invest – into the person. Labor today is so hard to find. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good people. It, good people. And when you invest in somebody, and let's say Megan in my office, man, she's awesome. And if she would ever leave, like if or call in and be like, you know, this really happened, and I'm going to be out for three months, dude. Yeah. Listen, that's that's one of the things. That's a problem. When I I don't really have any business background other than learning on the job here at Spear, right? I, I, my family's in business and stuff, and I've done well over times, but I'm not a business person per se. And one of the best lessons that I've learned is you can't get emotional about these things. Yeah. It, you have to have systems in place, mm-hmm. right? Our company, Spear Education, 200 employees, is not dependent on any one person. That's good. You can't. It has and, to be a and team. You, and it's a team, it, and mm-hmm. it's systems, and we have a process. So if any one person, including our CEO down to – uh, our mailroom clerk. Any one person leaves, you have a system that takes care of it. You have to treat your dental office that way. You cannot put all of your eggs in one basket. So what does that mean? So let's say the average cross office. training, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to you cross have to. training. Yeah, uh, in, invest in that person's education. So wh- wh- you know people are going to move on, but don't give them a reason to leave your office. Sure, give them that responsibility. Hey, this CAD cam, you are the CAD cam king or queen here, um, and you're responsible for this. Learn it. Let's write it down. Let's put a system. It's good in advice. Place it's good and, advice. And, and have processes. But a, but a bigger question that I just want to take a moment to address is I, ROI is an, is an emotional thing. Okay. I can lay out for what, whether it's CIRAC or a new handpiece or a sterilizer, I can go and get CPAs and I can lay out the most economically sound reason to do it. And if you're not emotional about it, if it doesn't matter to you, you'll find a reason you're not going to do it. Right. And the way I recommend people that 
the people approach this is this is your hobby, okay? I have a hobby of fish tanks. Okay? I've got a thousand gallon saltwater fish tank in my house. It's oh cool, man, man, I'd love to see we, that. We, we built a house and the house is built around the tank. Now I won't go into the ROI because there is no ROI there. <laughs> no, right? Right, no. Right, right. Okay? But that gives me so much joy. My daughters clean the tank with me. We feed the fish and it, it's our family. Sure. Okay? Yeah. Now, people will have home gyms. They'll have their car that they're into. They have fish tanks. They have whatever hobby that I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. And you both have that. Mm -hmm. You have a hobby that you don't care what it costs. I don't care. I'm doing it because it gives me pleasure. Yet we treat our offices like a third world country. I agree. Treat your Man, office preach. like a hobby. <laughs> yeah, this is good. <laughs> right? This is treat so your, good. Treat yeah. your office like a hobby. And, and you buy that new equipment, whatever it is. I don't care if it's Sirac or whatever. And let's say you have a negative ROI of 250 bucks a month or 1000 bucks a month. Is that going to kill you if it gives you joy. pleasure and joy? I see so many miserable dentists Thank just, you. just just unhappy yeah. with their practice. No passion. No passion because they've got old wallpaper, crappy floors. Um, they hate waking up and going to the office. But they yet they spend but yet they spend $5 on a golf ball. One. That that's my point. Yeah. So and you make, can't tell them. Yeah. So make your office that hobby for you to where part of it. We're right. Part of it to well, where yeah. you, I get up you and I go passionate to, about it. John, yeah. I talk about this. You yeah. got to get up and go to work and it not feel like work. Exactly. Yeah. You got to enjoy it. Yeah. Exactly. And I think I, we and we are completely on board with that idea because, you know, Wes and I have bots technology that, you know, it, it's not a direct ROI. I mean, Cone Beam is a good example of that. Yeah. You know, it's not something that you're going to make money on every day. Now, you, man, there's does some it things, get as excited, though? Yeah, but, but there's you things know? you can do with it that make you excited, yeah. and there's things you can do with it that change your patients' lives and that make your life easier. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, we're all we're all about that. I think I think that, though, there's also maybe, though, with Sarek, there's a, there's a component of that where you have to at least want to learn about more about the lab side of things because yes. it's definitely – it's a little more than, say, like buying a cone beam. Or even buying a scanner, where you're just like it's a new way of taking an impression, but this is a this is a whole other technique. It's a different workflow. But if it's going to be different for everyone, right? So yeah. some people are going to say, you know what? I do fifty crowns a month, and mm -hmm. I, I don't want to use it for anteriors. I don't want to use it for anything else. This is just my crown machine. The amount of lab work there is about the same as polishing a temporary. Right? There's no, there's nothing different there. Mm -hmm. There are others who say, I'm going to do my anteriors with it. Yeah, now you're getting more involved. There's others that are going to say, I'm going to make my surgical guides with it. So, okay, you're doing a little bit more. There's others that say, I'm going to make my sleep appliances. Um, I'm going to do occlusal um, you know, adjustments using the CEREC. Mm -hmm. Wh whatever, whatever they want to do. It, it, it is, I'll go back to what we started with. It's a tool. Mm -hmm. How you use that tool will determine how involved you want to get. I get so many people that come in with their assistant, and they're sitting on the side. The assistant's working on the machine in the course. I'm like, are, are you doing okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I want them to learn. Yeah, I'm yes, good. Yeah. Yes. I'm good. Yes. Right? And, 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 and that's a good business that's model. That's fine. That's, a, that's, that's the your, great business yeah, model. Yeah, and that's really, like you say earlier, that's kind of how you have to do it if you want to look at it as a comparison directly yes. against a lab bill. You yes. have to have that auxiliary doing it and learning it and yes. and owning it, and and but then see, I, but but again, we're getting caught up in the minutia of it. Let's let's take a step back and realize. Okay, so let's say, yeah, you have to do lab work. Yeah, let's say there's a little bit of a negative ROI for that one practice because they're not fully utilizing. Yeah, I've got to change my office. I've got to change my systems. But what do you gain from that? How many of you or anybody out there? Think of the worst medical procedure that you have to go through, and the doctor says, you got to come back a second time. There's a, there's a person attached to that tooth, and if I cannot have them come back, who likes going to the dentist? Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody that likes going to the dentist as a patient. I mean, our patients love us and all that stuff, but they would rather not be in that chair. And if I can make it easier for them, sure. and all of a sudden they're saying, wow, that was great. I mean, forget all the other stuff. That's the bottom yeah, line. That's right worth there. a lot. Mm -hmm. That's it's definitely worth a lot. Definitely worth a lot. And and I think that that is, that's the and that's not a a sales pitch. But that no, is, no. But that is the reason that you have to think. It sounds like of Sarek differently than just looking at the dollars. Yes. It's just it's not. We only have to get out of it. dentist mode and look at it as patients. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, so I we talked about reducing agree. friction last night and reducing friction in our businesses, and this is one way to do that. Yeah. It's an expensive way. And it's a lot of training, 
but you need to get the proper train to do this. I want one of the other things about ROI on something like this that I think that we should bring up before we have to close the show is, um, you know, there's an upgrade cycle to technology. Mm -hmm. um, I've experienced that uh, with, um, I had the original uh, 3M COS mm -hmm. and, uh, and lasted five years. And I decided to upgrade to the tr newest TrueDef uh, a couple years ago when they finally got the new wand right. The smaller wand. Smaller wand, yes. And, um, you know, it's a five-year you know, mm -hmm. upgrade cycle, and obviously the price had come down. It normally does with technology, and it has with Sarek as well in some respects. Um, but what do you think um, when you tell somebody, okay, you're going to spend X amount of dollars on a scanner and a milling machine, um, when is this going to be upgraded? Like, do you feel like that there is a point where you're just not going to have it be part of your like everybody's going to have a car payment, just mm -hmm. like everybody's mm -hmm. always going to have a mm -hmm. Sarek payment. Mm -hmm. Is that is that the kind of system that's, that we're that's buying? That's one way to look at it if you want the latest and greatest. I, I, have, I know people that bought a blue cam and a compact milling unit in 2009. Mm -hmm. We're almost in 2018. Yeah, it's nine years old. And they're still using it. Yeah. Okay, now they don't have some of the capabilities that we have with the newer <laughs> stuff. Sure. But it's working for them. So, yes, you can look at it that you're going to have an upgrade path. Um, if you want to continue with the latest and greatest, or you can say, it's serving my needs now, and, and I don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. That's an individual decision. Right. Um, yeah. But, but you know, um, you're right. Technology. Yeah, wears and tears. There's wear and tear. You're going to have to. At some buy. point, yeah. And once it you. Is five years, uh, is, it, is it a good, for Sarah, do you feel like that's the, I think that's it, the upgrade I, cycle? I, I, or, I, or is it, because it seems like, it seems like that, here in the past, I mean, like, I feel like that sometimes users feel a little, they feel like they've been thrown under the bus because a company comes out with this, they get sold it, and then t a year later, here's the next camera. Yeah, so and they have to pay this money. And I know that that's no different than buying this laptop this year, and the yeah. next year the laptop comes out, it's bigger and better. Yeah. I this is a conundrum for the dentist and the companies because the companies could say, okay, we're not going to do anything for the next 10 years, and you have nothing to upgrade with. Right. They're not going to survive as a business. Right. Wow. So they have to constantly innovate. Right. Um, five years, I think, is a very uh, good estimate. But again, it's going to be individual preference. Sure. Right. And um, you could still, like you say, be using an older camera and getting, if you're getting good results. Right. Some people use that. Well, and to be honest right. with me, my racquetball camera, that's what that thing felt yeah. like, was. I had the really, original COS as well. It was well. a really good I, camera. Yeah. You know, but, you know, it had its limitations and, the, you know, the new camera's way better. Yeah. So know? let's talk just briefly about, you mentioned, you know, that it's a conundrum for companies. And one of the biggest changes that's happened in the Serona world has been, obviously, Densefly and Serona Sorona, yeah. and the merging of those mm -hmm. two companies. And I just wonder if you could talk about the how you think. The largest dental company yeah. in, in the, the world. world. So, so how's that going to change? Or do you think it's going to change Serona? Do you think it's going to change Densefly? Where, where, what direction do you see this taking? Um, so obviously I have a lot of in, insight. Yeah, I know you can't maybe <laughs> say friends, everything. Good friends with the CEO and the president well, of the just, U.S. Well, just tell uh, us at least uh, what you think is going to be good about it, if well, nothing else. Well, oh, I think there's a lot of good things because now you've got the, the CEREC people talking to the implant people and Astra talking mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. uh, endo people and the cone beam. So there's a lot of good there. Um, I, I think... Um, the, yeah, but the, now, you're the fly on the elephant's back, and it's hard to turn the elephant. And let me just tell you right 100%. now, yeah. the reason why I use a smaller implant company now, and I left Astratech, I'm just going to say it on air, yeah. is because I couldn't turn that elephant. And yeah. for years, we would ask for certain things, and they would just say no, no, no. Right. And that has to scare you. Yeah, just an exa quick example, you know, <laughs> and we won't, we won't dive too far into that, because Wes and I both feel the same, but... You know, for years, we wanted Astra to give us a multi-unit abutment. Just mm -hmm. give us a multi-unit, man. Like, we've been doing all on for, yeah. for how for long? Implant. And we love your implant. We believe you in your have implant. Hey. And so finally, they come out with it this year after everyone else has already passed up. So it's just an example. So is the I, I fully get that because it, yeah, I've been yeah. a beta tester now for, you know, 10 years, 10, 12 years. So I, I get that. Except yeah. I'm closer to the yes. process. Like, guys, I yes. just need this. Listen, that's going to be a challenge with any company. I mean, that's yeah. that, that's. Well, I, know, I don't a, think it's a challenge with any company. I'm well, no, but here's the thing. Yeah. yeah. But but here's the thing, though. When you have a bigger company, you've got more resources, right? Yeah. So you have those resources to come out with more innovative stuff. But then you're also innovating at a much slower pace because right. you cannot afford 
to be so drastic and dramatic that it upsets the apple that cart. some things have already been figured out mm -hmm. and there's engineering from you know if i wanted to take this mic stand and engineer a new one yeah i'm a copy engineer yeah. You know, and right. just make because that's already been proven that that works. Except when you're in a big company, well, I got to run it through legal and where that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I, saying. I get it. I, what it's what a, because it's, I'm privy to also yeah. information from yeah. you know some people that are leaving certain implant companies to go to implant companies that are innovating faster because yeah, we just were at a conference a month ago where where there's everybody that we're seeing sitting at the table representing this company. We're like, wow, they they were all last month at a big company. Yeah. And then a merger happened and they saw what they felt was happening and they're like, we need to be at a more agile company because that's what our doctors are asking. I know for. we're making you uncomfortable. Yeah, no, 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 you're not, you're 100%. We're Listen, I'm not a Serona that. employee. I've obviously know those folks. And, but, but from that aspect, you always have to look at both sides of the story. Like why did they leave? You know, was there, was there a, a reason for that? Hey, I want better patient care or the better doctor care. That that's one reason possibly. What could be another possibility? Now I'm going to be cynical here. Hey, we just joined this company. Now I'm supposed to get this higher position. All of a sudden, nah. the guy from the other side is Very going to true. take it. Very true. I'm Very screwed. True. I have no upward path. Right. I'm not saying that's the reason, right. but what I'm saying is, having been on both sides of the manufacturer side and on the on the clinician side, um, it's not always so cut and dry. Yeah. Well, but but I would agree with you that bigger companies move slowly, and that is absolutely a valid frustration and it's a concern for dense by stream they need to not slow down with what they're doing because mm -hmm. you know other companies are going to pass them up yeah but on the other end they've got the resources to, to right. catch up so right. we'll see what happens yeah. so you've heard sam from seric doctors and spear education here today and i'm i'm going to give you the last word um if uh, i appreciate yeah that. thanks Thank a lot so much. Much. I appreciate it, man. and i'm going to give you the last word if you're going to tell any if you could say something to our listeners, uh, they're about taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. What could you say to them? Don't stop uh, innovating. Um, you should know where you want to be five years from now. And if you're doing the same thing that you're doing five years from now that you're doing today, uh, something's wrong. Um, I can already tell you, I already in my mind have a vision of where I'm going to be five years from now. And five years ago, I knew where I wanted to be today. And it's all about just staying passionate, staying engaged, and learning. Uh, surround yourself with successful, happy people. Don't surround yourself with people that hate what they do for a living because you will hate what you do for a living. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself and your office and don't be afraid to invest in your staff. And uh, love what you do and do it with passion. That's, that's my two cents. Well, I'll tell you right there, John and Wes and Sam, um, I mean, I really think that this is a great episode. I think that what we've heard here, to me, it just encourages me that there is other people out there that yep. are wanting to take it to the next level, John. Yeah, this and is the kind of thing we talk about all the time on the show. Is like you say, it's about that making your your work, your passion, or one of your passions, always looking to get better, always looking to uh, see where you're going to be in the future, and try to find a path to get there. So we appreciate what you're doing here, and it's been it's been exciting yeah. to, get to so, talk about that. You know. Um, if you're listening to this right now, we, we need you to go over to iTunes and hook us up with a five-star review. I know Sam's going to do that as soon as he's done here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Already and, did. Yeah. And uh, check us out on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Send us uh, a like or send us a comment. If you've got a question for Sam, we'll pass it along to him and get that answered for you. Um, again, this has been a great show, and we're looking forward to the next one for uh, Sam, for John. I'm Wes. The Dental Guy, and this has been The Dental Guys.